why is it that the female narcissist seems to get away with the behavior more than a male narcissist? Why do they get away with the rage? Have you noticed how if you've had a female narcissist in your life, it seems like the world kind of excuses the behavior? Frustrating, right? It's really an awful thing that happens because what happens is survivors who have had a female narcissist in their life tend to lose their ability to talk about it because there is so much around the way we perceive a female narcissist and the way the female narcissist projects herself into the world that protects her and gives her excuses and reasons to justify the behavior that she's doing. Do you know what I'm talking about here? It's a phenomenon to watch. If you see it in person and it is not happening to you and you witness it, I have had the opportunity and experience, unfortunately, of witnessing it. And it is wildly outrageous. Let's talk about it a little bit. First of all, I wanna say, this is in no way meant to diminish women and their ability to have a voice, to express what they need to say, to express themselves in anger or in any other way that they need feel they need to. I know a lot of female survivors and I have been accused of this when I tried to talk about this before that I'm trying to silence women, okay? I'm not trying to silence women. What I'm trying to do is explain how the female narcissist uses female uh, political and social issues to get their way, okay? How they will use things like, don't silence me, you're just trying to shut a woman down and things like that in order to get away with the attack. It is not the fact that they're female I'm talking about here. The only reason I'm talking about it as different is because there are differences in the way society views them and in the way they use narcissism to go after their... One thing they do is they play the victim. They play the victim and they blame other people. They will play the victim, all narcissists will do this. But the way female narcissists tend to do it is by saying no one's ever listened to them, the world shuts them down, people don't listen to women, they'll start throwing in women's issues. But it's not relating to women's issues, it's actually relating to their own personal agenda for their own delusional world that is supporting whatever it is they're trying to manipulate. Does that make sense? It's the way they take and twist things and gaslight, same as every other narcissist in the world, and then they use the issues to protect themselves from being accountable and from being, uh, and to prove their righteousness in what they're saying. But the thing they're actually saying, so in that sense, they're gaslighting on top of gaslighting. Does that make sense? And unfortunately, they shut you down quickly, especially if you're male, because what are you gonna say if they're screaming toxic masculinity at you? And what are you gonna say if you're in reaction and, and reacting to them in any way that is remotely heated, remotely tempered back? In other words, if they're attacking you, blaming you, accusing you, and you do anything except stand there and stare at them silently, you're gonna get blamed for being toxic masculine, you're gonna get blamed for all kinds of things. I'm not saying those things don't exist, of course they do, but that doesn't mean that a survivor who is being attacked by a narcissist is doing anything, right? If they are in a state of reactive abuse, then it's like any other state of reactive abuse and it has nothing to do with that sort of personal survivor's view of women in particular. Does that make sense what I'm saying here? They're using an issue that is important in society, twisting it, using it for their own means in order to protect themselves from the abuse that they are spewing at everybody else. I have witnessed this happen. I've watched a female narcissist verbally berate a man in front of a kid, okay, kid hiding behind me, not pleasant, really unpleasant, okay, I've seen this happen, and the excuses made were that that person was simply stating her truth, and it should be listened to, and she is righteous and right in saying everything she said. From the witness and spectator's perspective, it looked like insanity coming out of the person's mouth. It looked like the worst, most incredible issue in the world when I knew that the issue was not, it was tiny. Okay, so that's gaslighting, right? That's gaslighting and attacking this other person, but it, it's not pleasant and it isn't pretty and they don't care who sees it. That's the other part. 
they don't often care who witnesses it. I've heard of narcissistic mothers ranting at a dinner table in front of an entire table full of guests. And they are the only one who is unaware of how absolutely over the top it is. Everyone else is sitting in shock. Is that familiar? <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. Women are allowed to speak their mind, of course, right? They're allowed to say what's on their mind, what they're feeling, what they need to express. There's a way to do it that is not harming other people. Even if it has to be direct, even if it has to be a little more, a little less um, friendly. It, I'm not saying we need to people please to get our point across, but you know what I mean? If you've ever dealt with a narcissist, they aren't even doing that. They are literally attacking over something that is within their delusion, over the same things all narcissists go after you for, right? And the way they're doing it is through a means that shuts you down and keeps it so that anyone else in the world who hears, hears that conversation will believe them because they can prove that you are uh, shutting them down. I've had this happen to me personally, people telling me that, you know, even talking about this topic is wrong and hurtful because as women, <laughs> we should be sensitive to women survivors. I don't see how this is insensitive to women survivors. I'm not talking about women survivors. I'm talking about women narcissists, right? Okay, so, so anyway, the gaslighting, yeah. So um, the thing is they get away with it because they're female. If a male narcissist did some of the things that a female narcissist did, it would be so obviously viewed as abuse. It would be so obviously seen as abuse by anyone you told the story to. These things are over the top, okay? And I'm not saying, and I'm not trying to diminish the abuse of a male narcissist, okay? I'm just talking about it as a different topic. And the fact that because they are female, they seem to get away with a lot. And if you've ever had one in your life, you know what I'm talking about without me explaining much more. They seem to be able to convince society, convince friends, convince people, and convince you that it's your fault, that you're wrong, that you did something wrong in the situation in such a big way. The manipulation, it's like, it's so tight, right? Okay, so when they throw issues in, when they throw in political or social, when they throw in social issues, such as um, women's rights to anything, women's, uh, equality toward women, when they throw in anything like that, they have instantly shut down the conversation because you cannot argue with it, right? You can argue with it if you're logical. If you're like, wait a minute, that has nothing to do with this. You're using that. That won't work, right? Because then they'll just gaslight you more. But the fact that they do it makes it so that they can then backtrack it back to that and make the whole thing about that and gloss over everything else. It gives them a huge platform because while it isn't about shutting them down, it's really about not wanting to listen to the viewpoint that they're coming from, which is one of toxic narcissism. The thing, when they're doing this and they're doing it in front of their kids and they're doing this in front of family members and they're doing this in front of people, but especially children because they're vulnerable to the influences of their parents, right? When they're doing this in front of children and they do do this in front of children and they don't see it as wrong, okay? When they are raging and attacking toward other people, when they are attacking the other parent, when they are attacking the, um, anyone, right? Anyone, it doesn't have to be that they're attacking a, a female attacking a male. A female can attack a female too, right? And I'm not even talking about in, in totally in uh, romantic or partnership type relationships. This can be any female narcissist in your life. And when they do this in front of their children, what they're teaching their children is to be desensitized to their abusive behavior because then they can claim the righteousness of, I was just speaking my mind. I have a right to say what I feel. If I am angry, I need to be able to vocalize my anger toward the situation. And I need to be able to tell that person what I think, okay? Yes <laughs> and no, because yes, if you do it politely, if you do it kindly, if you do it respectfully toward the other person, and if you don't put your emotions on the other person, well, we know a narcissist doesn't do that, okay? So when they are raging, what they're saying is, I'm normal. 
look kids, this is how you behave. This is normal. Therefore, when I do it to you and I will do it to you, don't complain, don't fight, just take it because this is normal. This is how a strong person behaves. This is normal. It's not normal, you guys, it's not healthy. It's normal for narcissism, but it isn't healthy, okay? So when they're desensitizing the children, they're also victimizing their child right in that moment under the guise of teaching that child, supposedly, how a strong person behaves. Or they simply don't care. They just do it anyway and they don't care what other people think because their narcissistic viewpoint is only matters what they think, right? Shaming everyone into believing what they're doing is correct. When you have, if you had a male narcissist doing this, you would say you're egotistical. You're being, you're being, you know, it would be so obvious. It's just, do you hear what I'm saying about how they can twist something that is important and right turn it into their cause, use it. They do it with religion. I mean, re religious abusers, people who re uh, abuse through religious means or through spirituality or through a church, they do the same thing. They use the church to justify their bad behavior. This is what the female narcissist is doing all over the place. They're doing it in the court systems against often their male partners, but also their female partners. They're doing it within the homes. They're doing it after when you're co-parenting with them or, you know, parallel parenting with them as the case may be. They're just doing, they're using this as a, as a means to be able to justify anything they want to say or do. Okay. And push the blame back onto you. The thing is, I think they think they're right often. What are you going to do with that? What can you do with any of it except protect yourself from it? Keep your conversations with them down to a bare minimum and try not to have any conversations in person. Keep it all in writing and keep it all in one place that is trackable and usable in court, right? Okay, so what are some of the differences with the female and the male narcissist? One is that they are very cunning and calculating. They are extremely often more um, into grudge holding and digging up dirt and then using it against you creating problems, stirring the pot. You know what I'm saying? They are way more into that than they than a male. Okay, it's just the way the, the female narcissist seems to behave. I'm not saying all or any, okay? So please don't think I'm generalizing here. Take this all with, this is sort of an umbrella of it and it's gonna be different for each person, okay? Um, they tend to attack directly because they can get away with it. I just explained it. They can get away with it. So they attack directly. They tend to threaten violence. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about narcissistic abusers who are also physical abusers. I'm talking about ones that don't actually physical abuse. The female narcissist tends to threaten violence. They tend to, because they, they, they try to provoke the other person into engaging in the argument and raging with them so that then they can turn the tables and look like the victim especially when you're dealing with a narcissist in a heterosexual relationship with a male. A female narcissist, I've heard this story over and over and over, and I'm going to read to you in a little bit a couple of stories, and one of which is a man who had this happen, um, wielding a knife while they're having a conversation. Well, I was just cooking, they'll say later on. I had the knife in my hand. What did you expect? The knife was right there. I mean, I just grabbed it. It wasn't, I wasn't threatening you, you know. Oh, but they're standing there screaming in your face about what a jerk and a, you are, right? They're yelling and screaming at you, holding a knife. They will get away with it, right? They are threatening you with a weapon. This is common. I've heard this more than once. I've heard of female narcissists literally lunging at men, okay? Getting them, and then, you know, the men our survivors, I've worked with them. I believe their story, okay? And I believe their story and I, I know that, you know, people watching this can say, yeah, he can say anything he wants, right? We gotta stop making this a gender issue and look at the actual abusers, okay? I've heard of female narcissists creating situations, lunging toward a man, punching a wall behind a guy and then crying when the kid walks by saying, why did you do this to me? Okay, so all the kid hears is a smash and crying, why did you do this to me? All right, the guy's just standing there. 
So men, look out. If you are knowing you're on the outs with a female narcissist and they have even the remotest little ounce of anger and rage in them, get, get the heck away because you will be framed, all right? This is common, they do the framing, happens, okay? And then what happens in the custody case? All right, so be careful. They often, if you go to therapy with them or even if they're going on their own, they'll convince the therapist that you're the abuser. They know all the words, they look it up guys. They watch these videos, all right? They look it up. They know what's going on. They will take half truths. They will twist them. They will use them to their benefit. It is more common with females. They just do. Think about it. They will use everything they learn in therapy. They will convince the therapist that you are the abuser. They will convince the therapist for a certain amount of time, all right? A good therapist that understands narcissistic abuse will see right through it but that doesn't help you in the moment, okay? Just stay away from therapy with them. And if they're in therapy, look out. They use their position to get away with it too, okay? I'm a mother. I am the mother. I care about my child's best interest. They'll use that term a lot, okay? I've seen it both male and female. That term is thrown around all the time. It's in my child's best interest. It's in the child's best interest. It's in my child's, you know. I am doing this for my child's best interest. And they use that position as mother, as female, as woman to manipulate everyone around them, okay? To manipulate the situation. It's just this sort of phrase that shuts down the conversation, right? It shuts it down. It's like stonewalling. It is stonewalling, really, okay? That's meaning that putting up a stonewall of words that you can't penetrate. It's impenetrable words. I am the mother. Respect, right? What do you do after that? You can say you're not acting like a mother. How dare you tell me what I'm blah, blah, you know. So it doesn't work. There is no talking to these people. There is only staying away as far away as you can and as removed as you can and as minimal contact as you can. All right. Their means of triangulation is often very skillful. All narcissists will triangulate. They often use the kids. They use family members. They use your mutual friends. And they will triangulate them in, in such cunning ways that you don't even know what hit you. And suddenly you're defending yourself to everybody around you. And they are either the victim or, you know, something similar. So it's really, what I'm saying here is you got to look out. If you're with a female narcissist, it is really best to step away. When you're in an argument with them, the approach is not usually an argument. The approach is usually a discussion that you're trying to have or nothing at all. I've seen them walk up out of nowhere in a complete rage over the tiniest thing and berate, attack, accuse. There's lots of accusatory statements, finger pointing, chin, you know, lunging in with your chin. Hey, you know, what are you doing? That kind of assertive, aggressive the female narcissist uh, is, it's not, like I said, of course, male narcissists do this too. It's the way they get away with it that makes it so damaging. It's, it's important for people who have been exposed to a female narcissist to have support, to be heard, and to have a voice. The thing is, because everyone sees, so what happens is people say, well, you don't know what happened in the relationship. Maybe she's the right one and he's the wrong one. This, I'm talking about male, female, but it could be female, female as well. And it could be, it could be any, any combination, right? We're just going to use that example. And a survivor will say, I was shut down by my narcissist. I was shut down. I was told I was wrong. I was told I was the abuser. So basically you're describing what he described in me. I'm not talking about that. If you know you're not the narcissist, please don't hear this as that. What I'm talking about is that is the exact flip that happens to men with narcissistic women. The difference is people rarely believe the guy, okay? People in general tend to want to listen to, to hear the woman as the victim. They tend to, and, it, and it's really true. And like all the other stuff I explained, they use social issues, they use political issues, to reinforce that belief that society already has and they know it. So that's why it's important. And it's not to diminish anyone or to say that, you know, if you had this happen to you from a male narcissist where they flipped the table and made you, made you seem like the victim, that you're wrong, okay? It's nothing to do with you or that in that situation. This is specific to dealing with 
what happens when the female narcissist does this and why it's a little different. Okay. So I'm just going to read for you a couple of examples that people have shared with me in order to help give a bigger picture of what it's like. All right. In my experience with a female narcissist is that they are sneakier than males just by the nature of it. They, uh, there is usually an undercurrent, if you will, of destructiveness that is often couched in. Times have changed and I deserve my say. The triangulation is sharper and more focused, especially with mothers to their children. My grandmother was a grandiose and malignant and pitted her daughters against each other in the most disturbing ways. These gals in their 80s now definitely have traits of fleas and possibly BPD. So another one that was shared from a male survivor is, I'm gonna sum up the first part, that while they were ranting about political issues would lump the survivor in and rarely exclude me from her rants, but sometimes she did. So in other words, she'd rant about things in the world and then start including the survivor as part of the issue and part of the problem with the whole world. Anytime we had an argument, she would rage on about her right to speak her mind, but then my voice was lost and not allowed. You see what I was saying here? This is exactly what I was talking about. I have letters to her describing discussions, guidelines, and my clear desire to work together on our disagreements. I have descriptions of some of her raging, backing me into a corner on two occasions, one time while holding a paring knife. One time after I asked her for help to not exasperate my PTSD, she deliberately charged at me, shouting in my face while I was in the middle of a panic attack. So you see, this transcends gender, okay? Guys deal with this too. And, um, or, you know, this could happen with a female narcissist to a female, it could happen with any narcissist. So this one describes, it, there's a story that someone was saying about how they had a narcissistic sister-in-law who was all kinds of abusive and went off on a rampage about something. And then, they decided to be as low contact or no contact as they can and also not allow their children to see her anymore. So <clears throat> finally, the narcissist says, is able to discuss with them what happened. And at the person and their mother, the narcissist, it says, shaking with rage and a crazy look in her eyes. She says, I wasn't, she was not sorry for what she's done and would do it again in a heartbeat because she has some skills in education and therefore knows what's best for the child involved. Okay, so when I explained, I wouldn't allow her to see the child again, she exploded. She tried to run off and ended up tackling my mom who was trying to stop her. She forcefully pushed her and ran, off, ran inside the house screaming when she returned. She told me if I couldn't forgive her, without an apology, she'd cut me off from my brother as she had done before with the sister. I went along with it to avoid being cut off and explain my boundaries. She was furious that I would have her on social, I wouldn't have her on social media. She demanded it to be her way because the photos of the child are important to her. Yeah. Then the next day she was saying how lovely it was to meet up again. It says, when I, I replied explaining I didn't feel the same, and she was left feeling quite upset that she spoke over me at every opportunity and then stormed off again. She denied it all and claimed that she actually apologized.